tongue. Amen. All right, do me a favor. Turn your Bibles real quick. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, the... Um, I was going to do, I was going to kind of piggyback off of John because I love that whole abiding piece. I love that whole abiding piece. Turn your Bibles, 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. And there's the, the text. And we're reading from the Amplified Version. All right, let's read this together real quick. Y'all got it? All right. If you have, say amen. amen. I know it's up here. But i also like you to find it on your phones, find it in your Bible that you bring and all that good stuff. All right, let's read together. Here we go. Now, as to the matters of which you wrote. Read everything. For a man not to touch a woman outside of marriage. Y'all see that? All my married folk, you see that? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I mean, you can't do what you want to do. All right, here we go. Five, let's go. All right, since I've spent a little time, watch this. I'm just going to kind of give you, while you're standing, just look at me and hear me, because I need to give you the backdrop and the exegetical, the exegetical uh, uh, understanding of why Paul is saying this and what question he's asking. So if you look, put the scripture back up, the last few up there for me, please, the last one. If you look there, it says, because a lot of times we say, it's better to marry than to burn. So, so the, 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 the burn is that, burn with passion. Passion that creates sexual Im immorality. Amen? Watch this. Which eventually makes you burn in hell. Do you hear what I'm saying? So what has happened here, I need you to pay attention to this, and I'm going to sit you down. I promise you. Give me about 45, 45, 90, 45, uh, uh, one minute. Watch this. Listen, look at me. Everyone look at me. So there's a letter that was written to Paul by the Christian Corinthians. They write the letter and they ask the question. The reason why they're asking the question about uh, and saying what they're saying is because, and, and you're going to hear me say this in, in, the, in, the, in the sermon as well, because they had a question because they're looking at, you know what, um, this, this spiritual, uh, spiritual uh, uh, next level uh, and this sexual immorality is a dangerous thing. So if sex does all of that, we might as well just not have sex, even if you're married. So Paul now is explaining to them, no, 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 that's not it. But you got to understand and know what to do and how to do and what you should do and what God is saying about sex. So no, married couples, this is a great thing, he says. This is a great thing. And that's what he's addressing. So in him addressing that, he gives light and gives knowledge to the whole ideology, the theological understanding of sex and marriage. Understand what I said. I didn't say sex and single. Sex and marriage, which is the premise of the whole action. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. Turn your neighbor real quick. Say, neighbor, neighbor. we're not talking about sex in the city. 
We're talking about sex in the church. Ooh, no, he didn't. 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 I am curious to see what this one. one somebody came up last Sunday. They said, they said, <laughs> they said, uh, Doc Stafford, you know, I wasn't coming this morning, but man, my spirit hit, hit my spirit. And I, I, the spirit, Holy Spirit, and I said, I got to go here with that radical preacher. <laughs> I said, praise the Lord, I love that because Jesus was radical in the name of Jesus. So some of y'all are like, okay, this whole sex thing, what is he getting ready to say? All right, pound, 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 fist bump, fist bump, touch and agree. Touch and agree your neighbor, sit on down, sit on, sit on, sit it on down. So, hey, look, check this out. Last week, last week, I think uh, we flew out, when did we fly out? We flew out Tuesday, late Tuesday night. We went to the Pac-12 uh, basketball tournament. We went to the Pac-12 basketball tournament, which was in Vegas, and I love Vegas. Went to see my, my, my guy, uh, Jalen, Jalen Tyson, uh, who, who uh, you know, as a little fella, I, I've been knowing him since him and his brother were, were small. Great family. Uh, me, and, me and his dad are friends and his mom are friends. Great, great, great family. Him and Nathan grew up together in that whole basketball arena. But he's a great, great kid. But we went to Vegas. I love Vegas. I love Vegas. How many of y'all love Vegas? Go ahead, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I know it's Sin City. I love that. I don't go there. I don't gamble. I'm not drinking. I don't do all that stuff. I like to see the crazy people and go to the shows. And then I just like because I'm, I'm, I just love the city. And it's just like action all night long, all night long. Action, action, action all night long. So I think Vegas is real cool. That's why I go. Some of you may go for different reasons, but I hope they are holy reasons and they stay holy in the name of Jesus, all right, because there's a lot of temptation. But we were going to the mall. Uh, I don't know if we were going to the mall, coming back. We did a mall thing on, because uh, Tasha worked from, from, uh, from, from the hotel. She worked a job, so during the day she was kind of occupied. Uh, but uh, that evening, I think one of the evenings, it may have been Saturday, I mean Friday evening or something, we were going to, um, to the mall or coming back from the mall. And I saw, I never, I've been to Vegas a lot of times. I never saw this. And when I saw it, I just thought about the sermon. I saw the Erotic uh, Heritage Museum. Some of y'all are shaking, oh, Lord Jesus. I was like, man, that is crazy. So I Googled it to see, okay, what's in a I already know what it's about, but I'm like, okay, what they have in there? <laughs> you know, I'm married. Me and Tasha go in there and check it out. <laughs> Little notes for my sermon. I don't have to clean it up. I'm married. I can go anywhere I want to go with her. <laughs> I got to clean nothing up. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about right now. Now watch this. Watch this. Check this out. So I Google it, and it has, you know, they got artifacts that have descriptions and showing all this and all kind of different stuff that are in there, all this stuff. and It's sex stuff. But it's based on how the world views sex. Mmm. Check this out. The church's emphasis on abstinence and celibacy for singles often leaves people feeling as if the Bible says that sex itself is bad. Because we put some, you, know, da, 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 you gotta do this. Watch this. That is so far from the Bible, what the Bible says. It's not even close. The Bible teaches that, understand this phrase that I'm gonna use, that marital sex is created and ordained. Uh, Y'all hear me up there, teenagers? You hear me down here? Ordained by God. Marital sex. There's no other sex in God. Ooh. Sex was designed to be a good and godly thing within the context. Y'all, I need y'all to say preach, preacher, okay? I need y'all to be a little, a little more extra today, okay? Extra today. Extra. Not for me, but I want to do it for yourself just in case you like closing down. Catch this, Tasha. However, when our culture conveys that sex is good in other contexts, that's where there's a, a major biblical and godly conflict. Hmm. More times than not in our culture, the images and portrayals of sex that we see are unhealthy and not in alignment with God's plan as it relates to sex. And if we are not careful, 
We can put too much emphasis on these negative portrayals which don't seem negative to the world and miss and ignore the truths about sex that can disconnect us spiritually from God. Somebody say, preach, preacher. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen, amen. Your boy is hot. The block is hot today. Yes, it is. Watch this, watch this. We're talking about sex in the church, not sex in the city. See, sex in the city and the city, casual just because I want to do it, that's been the problem. Go ahead and say amen. Everybody in the building say amen. Don't sit there acting all holy than now right now. Say amen, pastor. Amen. That's where the problem lies, our confused, worldly, flesh-driven understanding. Ooh. Here in our text, that's what we're talking about. Paul is addressing this whole question about sex and I told you that it was a legitimate it was a legitimate meaningful question that they are asking because they want to grow spiritually but Paul then goes into the whole description of why God created it and what it should be and all of these things that for a husband and a wife because they had these questions but then when he does that it opens up watch this the whole theological the theological understanding and mindset to look at this in a different light but a light from God and understand it on a whole different level do you get it so that's why that's why that's why I was excited when I was doing the research I mean it was so dope for me when I did the research and just really looked at a lot of things that, that we're going to talk about real quick about 15 minutes that's all I got you ain't move fast so I need y'all pay attention take some pictures of all the banners go up but watch this it, it really just gave me a deeper understanding, really, about me and my wife. Our, our, just, just a deeper understanding about me and, me and my wife's relationship as a married couple. I started looking at things like, okay, okay. You do know God reveals himself as you continue to grow in him. He reveals himself more and more to you. He couldn't teach disciples everything when Jesus couldn't teach disciples everything. That's why they still didn't understand when he left. That's why they were hiding, because they didn't understand a lot of stuff he was saying. But as you continue to grow, he continues to reveal himself, and it makes, it makes things great. Really, really, really. Check this out. So, first thing I want to give you. Watch this. First thing I want to give you. We're going to, we're cutting, cutting, cutting the corner, going straight to it. Watch this. First thing I want to give you, as it relates to sex in the church. And when I say sex in the church, what I'm referring to is sex from God's perspective. How sex in the church, because no other sex really matters. Sex in the world, sex and the city, sex, whatever it is, does not matter. It's only sex from God's perspective. Amen. It's real. Check this out. So the first thing you need to understand, and hear me good, young people, single people, and married people. This applies to you as well. Watch this. As it relates to the whole subject of sex, you must honor God in yourself. Mm. honor God in yourself respect yourself in this yes, yes. honor God in this so anything that relates to it has to be an honoring of God yes. honoring yourself and respecting yourself and respecting God oh let me help you out catch this any and everything you do in life must have an honor God and honor and respect yourself spiritual connotation connected to it anything on your job, business deal, casual conversations, your responses, all of those. Watch this. How you handle money, what you do and say around your children, how you treat your spouse, how you conduct yourself, and relationships. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Because there are some expectations of believers. God expects us how to act, how to talk, what to say, all that good stuff. He expects certain things. From believers, those that are believers say they love the Lord, they love Jesus, they saved and sanctified. Jesus is the center of their life, they're a follower of Christ. There are certain expectations that everything you do, you must honor God and honor and respect yourself. Do I have anyone that agrees with me this morning? Hear me good. I submit based on the why and what God created sex for and the uniqueness and the influence it has over the flesh and how Satan can use it. Oh, boy, to infiltrate. Hmm. To infiltrate.
infiltrate. Satan uses it. Watch this. To infiltrate over our flesh. Ooh. Because it's that important. And to just not infiltrate it over our flesh, but create havoc in our soul. In our spirit. Christians cannot afford to miss the mark on this one topic that has wreaked havoc on families and has called generational strongholds that the human understanding, oh boy, 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 cannot fathom. Can't fathom it. And when we operate from a human understanding, that's why the Bible says, watch this, that's why the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in the Lord, what? With all your heart, lean not in everything. Lean not to your own understanding in everything. That's why if this prayer is not part of your life every day, because your understanding, my understanding is going to jack up our lives. This is real. So, so there are two, watch this, you see that? Honor God, honor yourself. Honor God, honor yourself. In this whole concept of sex, honoring God and honor yourself is so paramount. There are two to-dos in this whole piece of sex. Watch this. The number one to-do says this. Understand the God version. See, we know the world version. But the problem is, in Christianity, a lot of folk don't understand and know the God version. Ooh. Not only that, don't take it lightly or casually. Y'all catch that? Here, here, here's the God version. Let me give you the God version. And you go back and you need to listen to this. This is God version real quick. Sex was created to be a unique experience to bind husband and wife together. And what the Bible calls, we use this term all the time, but understand the, 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 the reason why the term is made. To, 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 the Bible calls it one flesh. <sighs> Unity. Let me say it again. Sex was created to be a unique experience to bind husband and wife together in what the Bible calls one flesh. Matthew 19, chapter 6, verse says this. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, what? Let no person separate it, not even yourself. Mm. Watch this. Catch this. Since God, well, I need y'all to catch this right here. Since God invented, oh boy, I'm getting ready to kill a lot of demons and a lot of under, what about this, what about that? Since God invented sex, God gets to set the parameters for how to use it. Let's say amen on that. Say amen. Some of y'all missed that. God invented it. Why do you, we think that we can set the parameters? We can't. God invented it. So whatever God says about it, that's exactly it if you're a believer. Now, I understand the Bible says uh, the God of this world, which is Satan, has blinded the minds and the eyes of the unbelievers. So, of course, unbelievers are going to think from a carnal, fleshly perspective. But the problem is not unbelievers. The problem is believers. Because more believers start to understand the God version, we can then disciple other people to understand it and break a lot of strongholds that are connected to, watch this, worldly sex. Amen, pastor. Say amen. Amen. Amen, pastor. Preach, man. Preach, 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 preach. preach. God gets to set the parameters uh, for its use. God makes those parameters very clear throughout Scripture. Hebrews 13 and 4 says this, marriage is honorable among all, and the bed is undefiled. If you want to swing from chandeliers, swing from chandeliers. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Oh, this is real talk. The issue is some of y'all don't have that imagination. That's why your old marriage is just dried up. Oh, can I help? Help me, Doc. Can I help somebody? I don't care. This is the Bible. This is the Bible. This is the Bible. This is the Bible. This is what God says. If God said it, I believe it. That settles it. So understand, y'all missed the last word, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. That says that sex is just for marriages. Ooh, 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 18, verse says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. That's all outside. Everything else you do is outside the body. Understand, man, how important this is. But whoever, se uh, watch this, whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. It's like a double sin. You're not just sinning against God, but you're sinning against yourself. That's why it's important to honor God and honor and respect yourself. Oh, boy, boy, boy. I don't care. I'm going hard in the paint right now. Check this out. Based on the Bible, sex was designed for marriage. 
Period. Period. Stop tripping. Man, I wish somebody would have told me this a long time. Man, I'm telling you, God. I'll be like, oh, man, I missed out on so many blessings. I was right to the edge. But my little flesh. Oh, y'all sitting there like y'all been. Y'all ain't do nothing. <laughs> Young people, y'all hear me right now. I'm trying to help us that we get older. We understand. Yes, 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 yes. Period, period, period. Oh, God. Any sex outside those boundaries is sin. Any sex outside those boundaries is sin. Oh, I got three amens. Just ask God to forgive you. Now you can say amen. Everybody in the building say, God, forgive me. Just say, God, forgive me. Yeah, there you go. Now I need you to shout amen. Amen, amen. Now you, don't, now you feel comfortable because God already forgave you, all right? Single people, do you hear me? Do you hear me, single people? Single people, I'm talking about not single, single, but single with attachments. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Because singles with attachment, we're trying to watch this. We're trying to live, live like we married. The devil is a lie. The devil is, no, 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 not on my watch, not on my watch. That's why when people come and they, like, they live in the guy, I'm like, look, do you love her? Do you love him? Yes, I love her, I love her. Do you want to spend the rest of your life? Okay. Don't tell that. You ain't got, I know y'all want to wear it. Don't tell everybody, but you better get this thing right. Come into my office and I'll help you get it right, okay? I ain't charging you nothing, just coming in my office. You more, that, your soul is more important than anything else to me. You don't have to tell anybody, then just organize. If you take, a, if you take, if you take 24 months to organize, who cares? But I always know that once they do it, it's not going to last because the word is going to get out. Amen. This is, this is real talk. But, but watch this. Single with attachments. Uh, watch this. This is important. Teenagers, hear me. I got to speak a, 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 a place especially for teenagers. See, this is God's version. You got to understand why you, why you feel like you feel and all that stuff. Y'all hear me? I'm going to help you out. Parents, you better catch this and you catch it good because you can relate to it. Because you defied it. See, that's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. I was always telling my son, look, man, I don't need y'all to do like I did. Please don't. I want to be like, God, cover them in the name of Jesus. They may not have that grace and mercy I had. Please, Lord, I thank you every day in the name of... I wish I had some believers in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of Jesus. Watch this, teenagers, look at Despite what, what the cult, uh, current culture wants us to believe, according to the Bible, marital sex is between a man and a woman. Look, look, look. I don't care. Look, listen. No, but I love everybody, so it don't matter to me. I don't care what you do. I do care based on the word of God, and I'm going to give you the word. But I'm going to love you regardless, so it don't matter to me. So nobody can ever come and say, you bashing this, or you doing no, because I'm going to love them anyway. You won't even know the difference because I, I, I have to love like Christ. And God accepts, and, and, and watch this, God accepts and meets people where they are. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I just know there's power in, 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 the, power in the Holy Ghost that can change anybody. Ooh-wee. Simple biology, watch this, makes it obvious. God created male and female bodies designed and, uh, and, and designed the bodies right, to fit together in a way that cannot be refuted by what the society says or does. And this is biblical. Oh, some of y'all ain't said anything to me right now. And the ideology and theology of pre-creation cannot happen outside Of a man and a woman. God gives the command, be fruitful and multiply. There's no way you can. I ain't got to say nothing else. Y'all know what I'm saying. Somebody say that's a fact. Those are facts. Those are facts. Guess what? God knows what God is doing. Facts. Tell your neighbor, somebody next to you, that you didn't come with, understand. Tell them. The God version. The, God version. the, worldly, version the worldly version doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Ooh. Parents and teenagers, catch this. 
Sexual desires blossom during puberty and increase as the body matures. The sexual desires themselves are not wrong. What are you? You were created. Because one day you're going to go, watch this, you're going to get grown and you're going to get married. They're, they're, they're normal. They're not, they're not wrong. They are part of developing into a healthy man or woman. Catch this. What we do about those desires determines whether or not they lead to sin. That's why Proverbs 22 and 6 is so important. Train up your child in the way that they should go when they are old. They won't depart from it. Yeah, they may make some mistakes in the beginning, do some things they ain't supposed to do, but eventually that Holy Ghost is going to connect them and make sure they understand I can't continue to live like that. Why? Because you planted seeds. Now God is giving the increase. I wish I had some believers in the place. James 1, 13, 15 says, explains the progress from the temptation to sin. So watch this. Watch this. So it's, it's normal, teens. It's normal to have these desires. Watch, watch. James 1, 13 says, explains the progress from temptation to sin. Let no one say when he is tempted or she is tempted, I'm being tempted by God. So, so those temptations are not from God. That's what's in you. For God cannot be tempted with evil. And God, God self tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured or she is lured and enticed by his or her own desires. You're going to have some desires. Watch this, that Satan understands these desires. And if you leave gates open on those desires, Satan can infiltrate into those desires. They are automatically in you. That's why it's important what Dr. Stephen said. Look, you need to be in the ministry. You need to be growing. You need to be connecting where you can kill some of those demons and you can suppress some of that stuff that the flesh is trying to rise up. Oh, boy, boy. And the more you feed, you know what I say, the more you feed the spirit, the more you uh, kill the flesh. The more you feed the flesh, it really don't have to get fed that much. Just do nothing. Mm, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Then desires when it is conceived gives birth to sin. And sin when it is fully grown brings forth death. Woo! Brings forth death. Generational strongholds, life problems, picking the wrong single attachment, getting into relationships that you should have run as fast as you could from, staying in relationships the wrong way instead of the God way. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Teenagers, catch this so you won't have to go through them problems that we had to go through because nobody helped us. Watch this. Teens, 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 teens. Sex is a grown, married activity. Let me say, uh, y'all better say amen. Everybody in this building better holler out, amen. Help yourself. Singles, singles with attachment. Sex is a married activity that God honors. Don't dishonor it or yourself. Married couples, your body does not belong to you. You are one. Hear me good again. Sex is a sacred act created and ordained by God for the sanctity of marriage. It has an oneness power and an anointing attached to it. It is not to be taken lightly or casually. It is imperative to your godliness, our godliness and our spiritual prowess that you and I understand and know the God version and not take it lightly because the world's version doesn't matter. It's us to teach our children to know the God version, plant the seed. Because the worldly version doesn't matter. Check this out, last thing. All right, I'm two minutes over. Give me two minutes. Watch this. I need you to see this. Because what happens? Because it's the sanctity of God through Jesus Christ. Listen, 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 listen. It will kill your anointing. You're wondering why spiritually you're on the roller coaster. Up and down. I'm talking single attachment people right now. You wonder why things can't get right. Because, watch this. Watch. Remember what the Bible says, marital sex. It's only, only sex. So it says it's for the married couples to create oneness. To be connected even more. This is real. This is real and you got to understand it. You got to pray about this, married couples. Create oneness. Anything outside of married couples doing it, it is sin. So now if it's sin, what you have done, ah, uh, shut up, listen to me. When you are single, teenagers hear this good, and you are indulging in sex, every 
I don't care if it's casual or lightly, it doesn't matter. Everything that that partner has, I, 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 I hope you understand. Everything that that partner has, all the craziness, all the strongholds and generations, guess what? On top of your problems, you have just spiritually transfused. Oh, y'all better catch this. I need you to hear this. You have just spiritually transfused all of those problems into you and you don't even know it. So now you're wondering why you're walking around in circles when she leaves you or when he leaves you. Because that's nothing but say now, watch this, the Bible says we are transformed. Why? By the renewing of our mind. If your mind is not renewed, Satan can just occupy it and make you seem like you are crazy. You can't eat, you're eating ice cream all night, you're eating chocolate all night, you can't rest, can't do, oh, I just, I just because watch this all that stuff now is part of you that that person had as well and guess what you just gave that person a lot of your stuff now you have just disrespect yourself you outside the will of God and now you just free game for the enemy that's why you see stuff not happening and working out in your life stop blaming it on everybody else the devil is a lie keep that thing zipped up Keep that thing tightened up and just trust God, respect God, honor God, honor yourself, respect yourself, and watch what God will do. I wish, oh boy, I wish somebody taught me this. Dick, don't you wish somebody taught you this? I'm doing, hey, hey, when you wish somebody got you with this, Demar, you too, right? Y'all shake your head, shake your head. I'll go ahead and say yeah. Hey, Keith, you wish somebody taught you this, don't you? Daryl, oh yeah, Daryl, you wish somebody, yeah, Daryl, you wish somebody taught you this. Hey, 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 Chris Black, you wish somebody. Sisters, save yourself some time. Young people, you better catch this and get it. Parents, you better be pouring into them. That's why I praise God for our, our hype ministry because we help parents parent. I praise God for that. That's why I say, look, they need to be in here because they need to hear. Now you need to make sure they understand it. I gave you scriptures. I'm going to give you the notes out so you can read them and you can see them because this is so important because strongholds are attached to us generationally for this. Your great-grandma was a garden too. So guess what? Oh, this is real talk. Papa was a rolling stone, so guess. Oh, yeah, I had to look back. I'm done. I'm done. I had to look back. My dad didn't get married until he was 42. Well, he had one marriage. Didn't work out that he married my mama when he was 42. 42 years. I can only imagine. Because he a staffer. He the OG. He was OG. I can only imagine. Y'all go ahead and play. Y'all go ahead. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm done. Come on. I, I'm gonna say, I want them to understand I'm finished. There you go. Watch this. This is real talk. I can only imagine. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Single with attachment. Y'all better catch this. And you better hear me good. Stop it. Get it right. I don't care what you do in your life. I don't care what you do in your life. I don't care what you got going on in your life. Man, you outside the will of God. Why well, would somebody would tell me this, man? I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. But I'm just gra- I'm glad for God's grace and his mercy. Because <laughs> that's why I'm here. And I am going to tell it, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it, and I'm going to be transparent so you won't think Doc Stafford up there like he holding it now. No, he is not. I am the one that can tell this story. Do y'all hear me? Everyone stand at this time. I was going to get that, but I'm not going to get that. I'll do it next week. Hey, meet me, Malik. Bring all my teenagers down here.
I need all my single folk with attachments. All my single engaged folk, come up here. Don't just come on. Or if you got a boyfriend, a girlfriend. God will do. He will. He will. Come on around. He will. He will. Come on around. Come on around. Help him out. Come on, altar call. Come on, in the Get around here, please. I can't speak. Shell. Shell prosper. It won't. It won't work. Hey, listen, 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 listen. I brought y'all up here. Check this out. And I need y'all to listen to me. Y'all hear me, teenagers? You hear me? Y'all hear me? Y'all look at me. Look at that. Look, 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 look. If you can't talk to your parents, you can talk to me, okay? Any questions you got, you talk to me. I got a little fella that comes up. He's probably nine years old. He's probably in kids' home. He comes up to me at least once or twice a month, and he has a question. All the time. Last, last week before last, he asked me, "How do you know when God speaks to you?" That was a hard one for me. That was for a kid. But the Holy Spirit told me to tell him this, and I'm saying this for because I need you to understand it. Holy Spirit told me to tell him this: God only speaks good things. So when when you hear good things in your mind and your in your in your ear, that's God speaking to you. Everything else that's bad, that's the devil. That's real talk. Listen, hear me good. You guys are getting older. Y'all hear what I said? Young ladies, y'all getting older. Y'all looking cute. Uh huh. Yeah, you're getting older. Now you're giving your mama's problems. And not really problems, but you've been a teenager. And they were teenagers. And then eventually, there's going to be the boyfriends, going to be all of that. Yeah, because mama and dad tell me, no, you ain't had a boyfriend now. And then boys, same thing. I understand that. Boy's a little different. Boy's a little gangster with this thing. But any issues you have in understanding this, I need you to talk to me, okay? Or talk to Lady Tops. You got me? You got anything? Talk to your hype leaders. You hear me? You hear me? You hear me? Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. You got it? Praise the Lord. Check this out, singles. Hear me good. Singles that have boyfriend, girlfriend, singles that attach me. You got to start thinking like this if you want to please God. Please believe me. You got to pray about it. You got to position yourself for it. You got to tell the devil he is a liar. You will not steal my destiny. You hear me? Don't, don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it casually. We're getting ready to kill some demons. We're getting ready to open the heavens, the windows of heaven for your blessings and your breakthroughs. Oh, this is how important this is. And this is how strong this is. Your blessings and your breakthroughs. We're getting ready to open your mind and your understanding for clarity, heavenly clarity about whoever it is in the name of Jesus and understand that. So, because we got to get it right. We have to get it right. So what? The past, the past. Ask God to forgive you. Let's, let's, let's line up and get it right now. You hear me? So right now, what we're going to do, everybody just lift your hands. I'm going to touch and agree with you right now. I got a specific prayer that I want to pray over you. Tell God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. God, we thank you for this day that you have blessed and you have made. It's not our way, our day. God, our ways are not your ways. So we stand here understanding that our ways are all confused and jacked up. And if it had not been for you, God, on our side, where in the world, in the name of Jesus, would we be? Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. So we come to you in total submission. Thank you for the word this morning. God, and I speak over my my teens, I speak over my single folk that may be engaged, single folk that are in a relationship trying to figure it out whether they want to get engaged. I speak over their lives right now. I speak over their understanding right now, God. God, continue to prick their hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit 
to make sure they understand and know and operate in your version, God. Not the world version or not what we thought before, God, but your version. Oh, God, give them a desire to please you in this, God. Whenever the flesh starts to rise up, I cancel it out right now in the name of Jesus. I speak your Holy Ghost power. God wraps his arms around them, gives them comfort, gives them God understanding, gives them a challenge to please you, to honor you, God. And as they please you and honor you, God, honor themselves in the name of Jesus. We speak, God, your blessings and your favor to fall upon them. God, show them your hands, show them your power, show them this is the way to live, this is the way to go, God. And God, by showing them, God, just open up the windows of heaven on their behalf. Manifest some of those desires that they are seeking for. Manifest some of those blessings that they are seeking for so they know, God, that is you. God, I speak it over their lives. Satan, you have no authority, you have no power. I cancel you out in the name of Jesus. I cancel you out by the blood of Jesus. I speak life, not death. I speak prosperity. Oh God, oh God. In the matchless mighty name of Jesus. Everybody just repeat after me at this altar. Be it done unto me. It is done unto me. Now, God, as we close this out, I speak over these teenagers. I speak over the parents. God, continue to influence the parents to train up their children in your ways. Make sure, God, that they're involved in ministry. Make sure, God, that they're part of church. Make sure, God, that they have devotions. Make sure, God, that they're growing spiritually. So, God, just help the parents. And help us create systems, help us create avenues, help us create pathways that will build them up spiritually. Say, you can't control them. You have no authority over them. So I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, I praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody in the building to shout out, amen, amen.